In this review, you're going to be hearing the microphone going straight into my Sony a7S III. There's no post-processing of any kind, only makeup gain and a limiter. That way you can hear the raw sound quality going straight into the camera. This current section, as well as the TLDR section in a couple seconds, is not being recorded with the microphone. It is actually being recorded with my Blue Yeti microphone. Tilder! This is the Comica TrackShot Onboard Shotgun Microphone. It costs approximately $180. You can reorientate the microphones independently. You can actually record in stereo or mono modes. It's got 19 hours of battery life. You can actually update the firmware through its USB-C port. Here's a little bit of what it sounds like in a sound-treated room. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. Do I recommend it? Only if you're a vlogger. Done! Roll that intro! Hey, what's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers come first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So today we're gonna find out whether or not this Comica Track Shot Onboard Shotgun Microphone is gonna be the right solution for you and your overall filmmaking kit. And I wanna thank Comica for sending this out to me so I can provide you with my review today. And like always, guys, they're not watching this video before I put it out, and everything I say is my own opinion. So without further ado, let's get started. You are listening to the track shot right now. It's boomed above me approximately, I would say, 12 inches away, and we're in a non-sound treated room still. And the wall is more or less right there, and there is a light, my Godox SL60, there's a fan on it, so you're gonna kinda hear how well can it reject in terms of being put into a YouTube situation like this. So, without further ado, for approximately $180, you get everything you need, including audio cables, whether you're going into a camera or a smartphone, a USB-C charging cable, two wind muffs, and everything packs into this nice little carrying case. In terms of the build quality, it's primarily made out of plastic, very lightweight, which is good. Um, well, at least for people that want to vlog with it. And on the sides, you basically have a charging port, an output port. There is a headphone port should you need it, which is always nice and uh, a very welcome feature. And lastly, in terms of the front, you have a screen that when you turn it on, gives you some information in terms of what mode are you actually in for your shotgun microphone. So it knows what to do, whether it should be a mono signal or if it should be a stereo signal. And lastly, there is a low cut filter on and off should you need it. Now the track shot basically has two selling features, which is that the microphones can be split or you can have one facing the front, facing the back. So if you're interviewing somebody in a vlog style, you're gonna be able to hear both parties without actually having to do a whole lot. So that's definitely nice. Now the second selling feature is the fact that you can actually upgrade the firmware through the USB-C port. In fact, they recently actually just released a firmware update. And basically what happened was when you were doing the split microphone modes, it only recorded in mono for whatever reason. So now it's actually recording a stereo signal. So if you want to be able to work on each person, each track individually and kind of EQ adjust and do all that stuff before you dual mono it out, you can actually do that. And without further ado, let's get to the sound quality tests. Again, this is going to be done in my makeshift soundproof box so that I can give you the cleanest audio possible. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. What's going on, everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker. You done messed up, eh, Ron? 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 You done messed up, eh, Ron?
For the battery test, I have it set in stereo mode just to see if that's gonna drain the battery even more. And I also, of course, have a fan blowing at the mic capsule so it's constantly receiving some sort of sound. And with all this done, we are seeing approximately 19 hours of battery life. All right guys, so in this configuration, what I'm gonna show you is how you could basically use the track shot for a podcast situation if you have a live co-host with you. So I do have it at the 90 degree orientation, so you're actually getting a stereo recording. One's pointed at me, one is pointed at my theoretical host, which I don't have here, but who I do have is Nate from Nate's Film Tutorial. Say hello, Nate. What up, son? How's everyone doing? All right, so if you were doing a podcast, I could ask Nate something like, Nate, in terms of your focal length choices, what prime lens or focal length do you find yourself using pretty much like 85% of the time? So we literally just got off a short film project and we had a couple other focal lengths, but the lens that we kept coming back to was the 50 millimeter. And that's a pretty standard lens, no matter if you have Super 35, APS-C, I would say even Micro Four Thirds, 50 millimeter just works. And I mean, I like it. Cool. So there you have it. This is one of the ways you could use the track shot. So if you do have this whole coho situation, you don't need two microphones, you don't need two wireless logs, literally just one track shot oriented this way, and that way you can basically kill two birds with one stone. Okay, so if you're in a vlogging situation and you're using the track shot like this and you suddenly flip it around and you, because you see somebody like, holy cow, is that Nate's film tutorials? Oh my gosh, is that TLDR Filmmaker? So what's the bottom line here? Is this microphone something you should be thinking about for your overall filmmaking kit? And I have to say, it truly just depends on what type of filmmaker you are. So let's break this down real quick. If you are a narrative filmmaker, then I would say probably not because there's not really a situation where you would need a microphone like this specifically. I guess if you are strictly on a budget and you want to have two shotgun microphones so that you can do the little thing that I showed you with Nate, then yeah. But I really think that that's probably not what you're doing most of the time. So just having a traditional boom operator moving back and forth is gonna get you the much better sound. And in terms of sound quality, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit in a second. Now, if you are a YouTuber and you have a setup like this where you're mainly just talking to the camera and this microphone is gonna be boom there and it ain't gonna move. If that's the case, I still say I can't necessarily recommend it because there are other options out there that are cheaper that will serve this one function purpose. There's just simply too much going on there for it to just be a YouTube microphone. So obviously where this ex excels is a vlogger. If you are hitting the night markets, you're going to street foods, stalls and stuff like that, and you're talking to the camera and then you flip it around and then you're talking to the person that's serving you food or other people you're talking to, then this is probably where it's going to do the best job. Because from a vlogging standpoint, this does quite well in terms of rejecting sound around it and just focusing on what's in front of you. And also the wind muff do a quite a good job. So you should be able to get some decent audio for your vlogging needs. Now, the only thing that I could see that could potentially be a problem, and this completely depends on what kind of vlogger you are, is that you're mostly gonna have the camera pretty close to you at first, and then when you flip it around, um, depending on how close you actually have the camera and what camera you're using, if you're one of those kind of like screaming, talking vloggers that are just really, really excited, nothing wrong with that, but if that's the kind of voice you got, and you have the shock and microphone pointing like this at your mouth, and you're trying to get someone to talk to you that's maybe three or four feet away from you, well, you're basically gonna distort your sound big time. You're gonna really clip it because you're way too close to the microphone. Now, there could have been something that Comica could have done with this design to negate that, is to simply give each microphone its own gain because if you do that, then you can have the microphone that's pointing at you at a much lower gain and then have the one that's pointing away from you at a higher gain. And that way you have more control of the sound. Now, of course, you could 
kind of do this with a passive preamp, but then at this point in time, you're stacking two things relatively the same size on top of each other, and that's not gonna do you so well. Now, the major thing I wanna talk about is actually the sound quality of this microphone. So to my ears, it seems that the Comica track shot isn't really getting a whole lot of bass response. You're getting the mid frequencies and then the high frequencies, which unfortunately to my voice does me no favors because those frequencies are actually where I sound the worst, especially around the one kilohertz range, which is what this one, this microphone seems to be picking up quite a bit. Now, of course you can EQ everything and see what that sounds like. So now you're listening to everything EQ'd, compressed, giving it the YouTube treatment. And this is what it could potentially sound like if you put it through its paces. So in terms of the sound quality out of the box, Nothing to write home about, but if you want to put a little EQ to it, especially in your vlogging situations, then you can get some decent sounds. Now, depending on how good of speakers you got, you might have heard a little bit of clipping in the beginning where I did not EQ or compress or do any sort of um, flavoring of the audio. Now this is actually more specific to my voice and probably some other voices, but this is what I've noticed about my voice specifically. Ooh. There's a certain frequency that I hit that seems to rattle the mic capsules because I've noticed that in certain cases, even though I have everything you know, tuned up, I'm not necessarily screaming at the microphone and everything is not clipping, but for some reason there are certain words that I say that will suddenly just clip the capsule. I don't know why, but that is something to for you to know because if you've noticed that your voice does something similar, well, depending on what you heard, it seems like my voice does it to this specific microphone, even though I'm a foot away from it and I'm talking in this direction and I'm not talking directly at the capsule. So that is something that I've noticed and something that you should know. When it comes down to it, $180 seems a bit steep for this specialty microphone. However, if you are in the category of filmmakers that can use the dual shotgun microphone configuration, this may be the mic to fit your needs after some EQ treatment. And hey, that is it for this week, everybody. If this video has made all the influence in your purchasing decisions, I would truly appreciate if you check out my Amazon affiliate links down below. Again, this costs nothing extra to you. It just gives me a little compensation so I can continue making videos like this for you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. And until then, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.